Today we are talking about Oleron. More specifically, we're talking about Oleron's balance state. But there are two things that I quickly want to address before we get to that. A. Let me know in the comments down below what things you want to know regarding Oleron's mechanics. I've already tested a lot, but I want to see if there's anything else that I should test for you guys. Just let me know. I will try that. And B. I will also be giving away a new Olympia battle pass code in this very video. The way I'm going to do that is going to be a bit different from the usual, so I'm quickly going to explain that before we get into the topic of the video. So I'm going to give away this code on Gleam, and what you will have to do in order to get to this Gleam page is find out the link, basically. So the link will be gleam.io slash, a random sequence of numbers and letters, slash neo minus olympia minus battle minus pass and what you need to find out is this random sequence of letters and numbers but you don't have to guess that i will tell you these letters and numbers throughout the video so it will tell you right now that the first letter that you will have to type in there is g and i will say the rest of the letters at random places in the video and they will be very separate from the rest of the content so you'll be able to figure them out very easily it's a total of five letters and numbers. You've got the first one. Now let's get into the topic of the video. Oleron, the new hunter mage in Smite who got released just yesterday. We look into the statistics here a little bit because we can actually access statistics already, which is pretty cool. We look a little bit into other people's opinions. And of course, I will also talk about my experience as well as some general things regarding his kit. So how do I already have stats for him? Well, for that, we got to thank Apopic which I still don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, the creator of casualsmite.com because he has or she has recently added the stats for casual conquest. So we have all the information about his performance, Oleron's performance in casual conquest at this point, which of course is very early, but it kind of gives us a decent idea already where he stands. His win rate yesterday, shortly after the release, when he had 300 matches roughly, was 48.99%, which I found surprisingly high. Today, it's actually gone up a little bit to 49.49%, so pretty much 50%, with 24,000 matches at this point. That is interesting, right? Because a new guy typically needs some practice before you can play him decently. On the other hand, of course, enemies also need some practice playing against the same guard. So there are two sides to the story here. At the end of the day, I would say if a new release is a fair bit above 50% before people actually had time to learn them, they're probably a bit OP. Whereas a stat under 50% doesn't necessarily mean they're bad, could for example be a harder guard. What is interesting with Oleron though, is that while his win rate is relatively high, that doesn't mean that all of his stats are high. And I pulled up the stats of some other mage ADCs, first of all, to compare this. You can see that his KDA is currently 1.42. Meanwhile, Kronos is at 1.82, but Kronos is also pretty strong right now. Sol is at 1.59, which, considering she's not super overperforming, is very interesting. She's also basically at 50% win rate. And then Freya is at 1.34, but her win rate right now is 46%, so she is kind of bottom of the barrel. Regarding damage output, Oleron is almost equal with Freya. Both have 16,100 and then basically 50, roughly. So very, very close. And we have Kronos with 17,000 average damage and Sol with 18,500, almost. So there is potential to deal more damage for sure. But Oleron, on the other hand, also has roughly 1,600 healing. In terms of mitigated damage, he's also slightly above the others, probably due to the extra protections. It is worth mentioning, by the way, that all these stats are just for guards that are played by players over level 30. So people have played the game at least for a little bit. And if we look at the hunters, I looked at the hunters with the lowest KDA, and there's only one hunter that's lower in KDA than older one. That's Ram with 1.39, and then you have Artemis with 1.42 and then they scale up higher to 1.5 and so on and so on. So what we can see here is that Oleron is definitely not the best when it comes to kills, at least right now. That can of course change over time if people improve with him. But I think that's still very interesting and it makes sense with this kit. He has a little bit more healing, he has more utility than any of these other characters, 
And what we can also see is that his damage mitigated is the highest out of them all here. So he definitely has other means of doing things. I also mentioned that his KDA automatically drops a fair bit compared to many other guards here because he is less mobile. I would assume that is why Artemis KDA is relatively low as well. If you can get picked out easier, then you often die more and that can also lower your KDA. And for most teams, it's a good decision to focus on all run in a fight, but at the same time, he can still have an impact even when getting focused. M. But that is the statistical side of things. Now, on the other hand, we can also look at the subjective part. I asked on Twitter, and out of the people that wanted to respond to this, 16% thought that Oleron is too strong, 36% thought that he was balanced, and 7% thought that he was too weak. We can therefore conclude that most people don't think that he's too weak, which is a little bit interesting considering his win rate is below 50%, and he's also, in my opinion, not the easiest guard to play, which could indicate that he's a little bit stronger, and more people voting for him being too strong kind of indicates that too but the vast majority of people still thinks that he is balanced. And I think often people also think that a god is too strong when playing against him and not knowing how to play against him, especially if you meet the people that already kind of know how to play the god. And Flareboot made a very interesting point here. At the moment, Oleron is not quite working as he should be because he has a scaling bug on the two, and that makes his objective shred better than it should be and way too high. And I noticed that in one of the games as well, so that's definitely an issue. So that could skew the perception a little bit as well. And at the same time, Blairwood, for example, also mentioned that he thinks the 2 doesn't actually do enough damage on the lower shot values. A. So let's pick this apart a little bit more and look at what Oleron actually is and how he works. I would say that his kit is not 100% balanced yet, but I would not expect that from a new guard. And I would say overall, for being a new release, his kit is relatively balanced. There are some important things to note though. I initially struggled a little bit with Ulran, not only because I play ADCs, I actually think that ADC-wise he has a very nice feeling to his basics, feels easy to confirm them, but more from the perspective of you do a lot of things that you don't do with other ADCs while still having to be an ADC. You still have to focus on landing your basic on the enemies, but you also have to consider basically your whole kit the whole time. You can't really go wrong with a Neath shooting her one at the enemy, weave or not. With Oleron, do you use the one without having the two activated and get less stacks? Do you use the one on its own? Do you charge the one and try to get someone in the backline? Do you risk losing something to the minions here in regards to the minions being blocked off by a player and you just hitting the player? With the two even more so, do you stack the two early in the fight or do you want to have the attack speed steroid? Do you use the two immediately or do you try to stack it up twice? Do you use the two to clear? Do you just use it in a fight? There's so much going on. And then the three, again, do you use it as a knockback? Do you use it as a heal? Do you hope for multiple allies to be nearby to get the protections as well? Do you have your allies rotating towards you in a team fight to get the extra protections while you can also knock back an enemy and heal both of you? And then, don't even get me started on the ultimate. Do you use it to protect? Do you use it to attack? Do you use it as a mix of both? Do you use it before they use their escapes? To force their escapes? Do you use it afterwards? Do you risk using it in a situation where you're gonna have a long cooldown? So, so, so many decisions. Let me quickly catch my breath here to say two. And having that many decisions on the fly essentially means that people will get better with these decisions the longer the guard's out, the longer they've played him, the more they got used to what you want to do in what situation, and that may lead to people improving. At the same time, I gotta say, especially the second ability itself, feels like the damage is, as Flaboot said, a bit underwhelming in many situations when you can't get a lot of stacks. I try to usually chain it with the one and hit the one first, ideally on a minion wave, and then use the two, but at the same time, you often sacrifice damage on enemies then, so it depends a lot on how the enemy is positioned. Overall, Oleron also plays definitely like a hunter, with a very rough early game and a very good late game, especially through the passive with a very, very high crit chance toward the end if you get enough power. And that is something that doesn't necessarily feel intuitive with every mage. I mean, even other mage ADCs probably have a better time early game. 
Ulrun also feels super team reliant, which has been a pattern with recent guards really, it applies to almost everyone. But with him it's especially noticeable because his three ties indirectly with allies being around him. But also his ultimate relies on teammates playing into it as well to really do everything it can do. And he also works very very well with hard CC from allies. I had a very hard time in games where we didn't have someone who had hard CC set up, not a guardian, because then the two becomes a lot harder to hit. Whereas if you have a long CC like a Ymir Freeze, you can do significantly more damage with the two when it is charged up. He also depends very highly on the enemy comp. He does very poorly versus mobile enemies that have ways to get out of his ultimate in, in different abilities, like for example Susano, and he also does very poorly against bursters at the same time, especially mobile bursters, because they can shut him down so easily. That is true for hunters and mages in general, but of course him lacking mobility so much makes it a lot more impactful and that little knockback is just not going to be enough in most situations. What is nice that if someone engages in your face you can often drop your two directly on them and that can kind of help you out if you have some lifesteal. T. Also, itemization is incredibly important with Oleron. It feels like depending on how you build, your impact on the game can be drastically higher or lower. And of course that's true for all hunters, but with Oleron I notice this even more. And in this context I want to say right now that I feel CDR is incredibly important on Oleron, despite originally having the feeling that the main stats are going to be attack speed and power. He plays a lot more like a poke mage in the early game with using the two and one combination. You want to have them up often so you can recharge the two quicker and you can clear more with the one. And you also, of course, take a lot of cooldown away from the ultimate with it having such a long base cooldown. I actually felt better going into CDR boots over pen boots and I also felt better going into Pythagoras piece over Bancroft's tail. Now this is of course objective and this is not going to be the be all end all in every situation but overall I think his kit is just one that benefits a lot from being able to use your abilities twice in a team fight if you can and your basics will chunk anyways as long as you have something like demonic grip or telekines in your kit so that should not be an issue in any situation. Outside of that with his ultimate he has very good siege potential and is very hard to siege against. You really have to force out that ultimate to be able to have an effective siege and I think this control as an ADC kind of character is very interesting. And that brings up the question if he's really an ADC. Frost for example who plays ADC on a high level does not think that he's primarily going to be an ADC and I can kind of see why. His kit isn't really geared towards 1v1s anyways and right now we have a lot of that going on in what used to be duo lane, long lane. And you often have more allies around mid lane most of the time, at least on higher levels of play and competitive levels of play. So in that regard, it's already kind of helping him more to be in mid lane. Your ult will also be less impactful if you're just hanging around in the lane on your own, so the more people are around the better. And as such, I would think right now he's more of an ADC that you put into middle lane and play him a bit mage, a bit ADC, and then in late game you can really steamroll with him. Maybe a little bit like Kronos used to be played quite a lot. Of course, if you have a dual lane partner that's supporting you and they are playing with you all the time, that might be a different situation, which is often still the case. And last but not least, it's also worth pointing out that I think Ulrun's full potential is also one that we only really see on competitive levels of play with high coordination, because the ultimate has such a big impact in a coordinated team and with randoms you will never quite achieve the same effect here, even though it will still be an impactful ultimate of course. It also helps protecting him much better and being more aware of rotations that way as he as an immobile god really can get pressured otherwise, especially by the enemy jungle. So I think overall Oleron is in a good state and I like the way he was released. It might turn out that in some ways he will be a little bit too strong, at the same time I like to see a little bit of a buff to the two anyways and then adjust the glitch damage instead and possibly tune him down later if things turn out to be too impactful especially in the SPL. But for now I'm very happy with him as a release and I also like that he has a good amount of counterplay and we will see how situational he ends up being. Again let me know in the comments what you want to know in terms of mechanics for the run and I will test everything as much as I can and also let me know what you thought about this format of a giveaway. With that if you enjoyed this video feel free to click the like button, if you're new to the channel feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. I hope this was interesting and insightful. 
See you for the next one tomorrow. Deuce off. Out. <laughs>